Thank you, Mr. Awad. Our next speaker is Dr. Hassan Ibrahim, an electrical engineer with a PhD in engineering administration. Dr. Ibrahim currently serves on the board of the Muslim Public Affairs Council, another major Muslim organization that played a key role in the 2000 elections. As an important leader in the American Muslim community, he has been featured in the Washington Post and appeared on NBC, CNN, Al Jazeera, the Middle East Broadcasting Corporation, and the Egyptian Satellite Channel. Dr. Ibrahim. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you for coming uh, to this event. Uh, speaking on the 2004 agenda for the American Muslims, uh, a question that on probably in your mind trying to find an answer for that. And I should ask you back, why do you think the American Muslim should have a different agenda than any patriotic American? An American Muslim agenda for 2004, simply put in one line, is to, how can we get this country to continue to be a great country? To be, good, to be a great country in its leadership, in its uh, commitment to its values, allocation of its resources to those values, that we need this country to continue to be a great power, not an empire. We can lead the world, the whole world, by our values, not by our guns. We can see in Iraq, we're trying to deliver democracy, but the problem is not in democracy, the problem in how we are trying to deliver. The problem is not in the message, it's in the credibility of the messenger and the approach that we are taking to, to the people of Iraq. They deserve it, they need it, but the approach has to change. And we will hear later on the Middle East from Ambassador Peck. What are we looking for? We're looking for, on the domestic front, civil rights. Simple. On the foreign policy, we're looking for human rights. These are American values. These are not just American Muslim values. That's what I expect that every decent American to stand for. The civil rights for all, human rights for all. We have laws to protect these civil rights for all Americans. We have signed conventions and the treaties to protect human rights for all human beings. And just need to be consistent with that. That's simply our agenda put in two lines. Any candidate who will come seriously committed to these values I think deserves the, the Muslim vote and any and every American vote. These are our values. We're not interested in a candidate who would look at our Constitution Bill of Rights and say, well, this is not going to do it for me today. I have a war on terrorism, so let me put it under the table. Let me bring something called the Patriot Act. Okay, that's more valuable than the Constitution or the Bill of Rights. That's not true. We don't agree with that. We have enough laws in these countries to allow us to continue to function as a democracy even at a time of crisis. We are not interested in a candidate who would look at our international conventions and say, well, these are not good enough for a war on terror. We need to, uh, to torture some people, maybe to kill a few, and uh, forget about these conventions, get me a legal opinion to get me out of these uh, bites. As American Muslims witnessed with everybody with shock and sorrow the events of 9-11, we were also shocked to find that the biggest lie of the 21st century, the biggest two lies actually put in one sentence, that was put this way, they hate us because we are free. These are two lies in one sentence. They don't hate us. And not only the Arab or the Muslim world, it, the, the whole world from South America to South Korea are angry at us. And they're not angry at us because we are American, because we are free. This is the second lie. They are angry at our policies. We have delivered sorry, developed economic development for South Korea, not an Arab or a Muslim country. But why are the Koreans, the young generations, are protesting against Americans? Because we also we give them with that 30 years of dictatorship. So economic prosperity for a country like South Korea that now is an economic power is not enough for the people to appreciate what we have delivered if it's with, it was delivered by dictatorship. And we need to watch that when we are handing the sovereignty, quote unquote, to the Iraqi people, that we learn from these mistakes. 
with the limited time that we have, and hopefully when your question answers, we can go into deeper uh, issues. And the specific items. Uh, does the American Muslim community stand for strong defense? Yes. But how do we define that strong defense? We see that a lot of money is spent on hardware. And we are not as safe or secure as we would like to be. When I see a big part of that chunk is going to not bombing bridges, but for building bridges. We need to see, to see shift in the budget priorities when it comes to defense, that we should see that building infrastructure in countries that need it the most is for our best defense. That the next threat is not going to come from a superpower like the Soviet Union, but it's coming from disfranchised communities and individuals around the globe. Reaching out to them, showing what America is really all about. The day that our Peace Corps or any equivalent uh, group is the size of our US Army, that's the day that I would feel secure. That we really need to put our resources in reaching out to these countries, Arab, Muslims, and otherwise. There are so many disfranchised people out there. This is an American value, I believe. That's, I believe it, as a Muslim, to be also a Muslim value. Staying with defense, I'd like to see also some of that money going to help the veterans that they put their, line, their life on the line every time they ask you to do so, whether they believe in that or not, and in the cause that they are sent for, they still obey and they still go and they still sacrifice their life. Sometimes they come back missing an eye, an arm, or a leg, and they don't get enough coverage to, to, to help them out and help their families. I would like to see that some of the money going to hard way to the big defense contractors going to help those Americans who are sacrificing everything dear to ensure that we are safe and secure. As an educator myself, I see many disfranchised Americans who would like to go to college and to afford the tuition for $80 billion that we are spending on war in Iraq, we could have sent every American student to college tuition paid. That's an investment in the future of America. The $80 billion that we are spending in, in Iraq I'm not sure that we're going to bring us the same value that we will get from investing in American students here in this country. We see a growing community in this country, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, who are suffering because of lack of health care. As you can see, I'm not as young as I used to be. Gray hair is growing me, so I also think of the future. What's going to be the future of social security or health care? People who are suffering today okay, are, should be ringing an alarm to all of us. What's going to be the future of that? Sensible budget priorities on the domestic front is, should be a mandatory. We should have really the Congress up in arms on this issue, that we should be spending the money where it's going to make this country to continue to be a great country. As Americans who believe in life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. I would like, to, would like you to entertain the idea of extending this to life, dignity, and the pursuit of justice. That's really what makes this country great. That's what really can make us lead by example, not lead by the gun. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ibrahim. I'm now pleased to introduce Dr. Imad Dean Ahmed, President of the